Okay, today we are playing a game on Dorado. We are in the Bronze SR range and we will be playing Sombra the entire way through. We're also on the console, by the way, so consider yourself forewarned. Now, because we're in Bronze, I don't care what the team comp is because when you're below gold, it basically doesn't really matter beyond do we have a tank and do we have a healer. We have both of these things. So, let's just start the game. So, we have to attack Dorado first. And we're going the long way around. I assume we're going to jump over the back. No, we're going to go up here. Because uh, we can... You can go over... Not go a little bit further back. You can go over this wall. Uh, we don't really look at it, but there is a gap back here. Where if you go over it, you come out next to the gate behind the choke point. So if you have... You're here with vertical mobility, you can just get behind them going around this way. So we have a Bastion, they have a Bastion. Our Bastion killed Doomfist, but their Bastion killed our Bastion, who we have now proceeded to bully. Uh, we do, we did put ourselves in an easy to shoot location, and we've immediately done it again. Because it's basically impossible for Bastion to miss us in this, in this area. Because we just stand, and now there's nowhere for us to go. There, we are just in the hallway with him. And I think we actually could have killed him if we stuck that out a little bit more. It was getting close, so I couldn't see why we would translocate away, but I think we were actually going to kill him before he killed us. But then we just immediately come right back again. Bastion can heal. We can't, so it leads to us dying quite quickly. But as soon as you start going down a narrow hallway like that, it becomes very difficult for the enemy to miss you because there's really just nowhere for you to dodge to. You're just going down a straight hallway at them. So we've chucked our translocator up on the roof over there, which isn't a great place to leave the translocator because it's an exposed location. And even if you translocate back there, usually when you translocate away, you're taking damage and you want to heal. There's not really a convenient health kit on the roof over there, so it's not like a great location. So we break the translocator and leave it there. I'd rather leave it at the bottom of the staircase or, you know in the room with the large health kit just because again it's like more out of, like it's harder for them to see it and it's it cuts down on time you have to spend healing like time getting to the healing because usually when you translocate away you need to heal so if you have to then walk over to the health kit and then walk back again you've just wasted an extra second or two which can matter so we're bullying the uh, Moira now, or attempting to. Moira could have attempted to defend herself, but she just diligently held down that left click, trying to keep Hammond alive, which was a fruitless, fruitless dream. Hack Doomfist. Doomfist can't get away. He was sleeping. This is very tragic for him all around. I would have liked to try and hack D.Va before we break the mech, because I don't know if diva has got self-destruct or not right now. So if we hack her before she breaks her mech, she can't use self-destruct, she can't get a new mech, it just makes it less likely that she's going to get a new mech back and stall us out somehow. Um, Diva in general, one of the saddest people in the game to get hacked, especially if she wants to ult, because then, ah, broke the mech, but I was hacked, so I guess I'm just going to feel bad and sad, I'm just going to... You know, push the key and hope, but no, no, because the hack actually lasts fucking forever. So Hammond just got absolutely wrecked. Doomfist's getting pretty wrecked. I would have rather just shot the do dude. I understand why we hacked him, we don't want him to get away, but we're so close to him. He's so easy to hit, and he's so close to dead, I'd rather just shoot him. And then we can save the hack cooldown for somebody who might be more prudent to hack in the near future. Because that do that boy, we were probably just going to kill. He might have been able to get away, but it was very unlikely from that position. So we use our MP here basically just to bully Anna. Apologies for the jump cut. Something happened. So we use the M basically just to bully Anna, it looks like, because... I don't think we hit anybody else with it unless somebody's behind us. So we amped one person who isn't even that impactful to amp, really. Uh, she can be, but we could have just hacked her anyway. And, oh, we've gotten real far back. This is the same translocator all the way back here. Hmm. That's unfortunate. 
I didn't realize we hadn't moved our translocator. So I guess nothing happened that would prompt us using the translocator sooner. So unfortunate that we uh, basically have to spend all this time walking back. So there's currently a fight happening on the payload right now. We've lost both our healers, which is make, make, going to make it difficult to win the fight. We were a little bit more preoccupied with putting a translocator somewhere than taking part in this fight. And if you look, Junkrat actually almost died. Because, I mean, he's below half health right now because our passive is triggered on him. I always forget Somber has this passive until I see it. And then I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. But he's got like 20 hit points over there. And he's the one that killed both the supports, so. But we're more concerned with putting a translocator over there than taking part in the fight, even though this fight is, like, very close to capturing the checkpoint. So that's going to be more important, just, like, taking part in the fight as quickly as possible, rather than putting the translocator somewhere. So there's no reason for us to actually jump down off of the high ground, really, because Sombra is... After they buff Sombra's spread, if you know what I mean, it, she became pretty decently long-range, actually. Obviously not to the set, but like, we killed that boy. Feels good. Not to the same degree as Soldier, but pretty long range. So there's not actually much reason to get down off of the high ground. We do like really want to kill this Farah. Farah's dead now. Uh, almost without actually any input from us, because she just suddenly got spiked pretty hard right there. Uh, we just went into stealth, even though that's happening right next to us. So we immediately break the stealth right after. And Junkrat's just used uh, the Rip Tire, so we would like to be invisible right now, really. Might as well hack that while we're waiting for the uh, tire to go away. I just heard Moira start ulting and then immediately die. Future me, don't take the audio out of that part. Because that sounded pretty good. So. Try to bully this Farah again. Sombra's pretty good at bullying Farah, but she got a shot in on us, so we don't really want to pursue her. Now we spend a long time walking back to this health kit when we could just use the small health kit next to us instead. And yeah, it won't be a full heal, it'll be a basically full heal though. And like again, this fight, we've like really almost captured the checkpoint. So we really don't want to remove ourselves from the fight for an extended period of time right now. Because capturing the point is like kind of the most important thing. And as we can see, that like the fight has like been pretty close this whole time. So you know, if we got back in the fight a little bit quicker, maybe maybe it could have gone the other way, and we could have captured this checkpoint. We do still capture this checkpoint, but we could have captured it faster. Ooh, I thought that fell off the edge, but I guess it hasn't. Not quite. That'd be a scary one to go to. I would rather just like replace that translocator because that could be like that could take us off the edge. Here comes the tire. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It was actually not on the edge at all. It stopped on one of the rocks, it looked like. Feels bad. Feels bad. Obviously. There's no way anything like that's ever going to feel good, is it? So, fortunately, they don't know how to play against Bastion. So, Bastion's killing a lot of people right now. Bastion's dead now, but he killed like four people, five people before he died. So, eh, whatever. Worth. Um... It's just... just Eva. Farah's coming back. Again, it's one of those situations where I'd rather just start shooting the Farah, because we can see that she's getting killed pretty quickly. She's real close to us. Even if she jumps, by the time she jumps, she's going to be pretty close to dead. So I'd rather just shoot her rather than start trying to hack her. Just because she's so easy to kill from that position. Hacking her doesn't necessarily do much if you can just kill her instead. Because death is the best form of crowd control. Very unfortunate, very unfortunate for her. Here comes Hammond. Hammond's been hacked, and oh my god, he can't aim at all, can he? I would, after this, I would just sit and fight this guy. Like, because that's terrible, that's terrible just how badly he missed right here. I'd just stay and fight him. I think the only damage he got in was meleeing us, so I would have just stayed and fought the dude rather than translocate away. He just, he just doesn't know what to do. He's just spinning over there. He's just spinning. <laughs> he just shot the fuck out of the wall, though. That wall is going to be thinking twice before it boxes him in again. Oh, that felt good. Oh. <laughs> uh. So Hammond gave us a lot of ult charge. That's cool. Good old ult battery Hammond. 
Oh, here's Diva, the other alt battery. So our translocator is not in a great position right there. This is not a great position to like put the translocator. I don't know. I assume it was like, maybe we're going to use it to get there quicker. I'm not sure, but like this is a pretty bad location to leave the translocator because it's kind of just out in the open and not actually near much of uh, not not actually near anything like health kit wise. You still have to go out of your way to get to any of them, so that's not a great place. And then, and eh, yeah, Viva gets those feels bad. So, fight's not exactly going well in our absence. Again, we try to chuck the translocator over there, but that's not really gonna achieve very much, because now we just have to come all the way down here, hack it. We don't really need to hack it, if I'm to be honest, and like, we could have maybe saved the cooldown for this, but like, it's not a great place. Now we're being a little bit more Sombra-esque, because now we're behind the enemy team. Um... We haven't put a translocator anywhere, and we're about to do something aggressive. So, she's she's sad. This, you know, you know, you know. Um, we didn't place a translocator during, the like, before this period, though. And we just spent above five seconds, because it was longer than the pushing back. We spent above five seconds with our back to the enemy spawn looking straight up. I don't know how many people are currently alive on the enemy team, to be honest with you. But we have our back to the enemy team spawn, standing out in the open, standing still, waiting for the dude to land so we can hack him, with no, with no translocator anywhere. So that was very risky business. We didn't get punished for it. We didn't even take any damage. But with your back to the spawn, just standing still, waiting for a dude, staring straight up, you can get punished for that one. So I would have rather put the translocator down somewhere before we started doing that. Didn't even necessarily need to be in a great position for that one, considering, like, we wanted to try and kill far more than anything else. So, uh, if we could just, like, chuck it somewhere and then get to it. But, like, there's actually... No, I'm gonna have to go back way too far to show that one. There's actually a health kit behind the enemy team on this map that not many people really seem to know is there. And if we get... If we, like, look over that way, I'll point out where it is. It's... It is back behind this doorway. There's a little alcove further in that has a small health kit in it. And, like, nobody knows that it's over there because nobody goes over that way. I've seen people go and pick it up maybe, like, three or four times over the last, like, month or the last, like, six months, you know. People don't go there very often. So that's usually a pretty good place to set up as far, uh, far as Sombra because not many people check that place. So we drop down, we amp, everybody's alive right now, right? Because the amp is uh, pretty important for Sombra, as it turns out. Yeah, I think everybody's alive right now. So we drop down, we amp everybody. We got Hammond, I think, as well with that behind us. Translocate away after breaking the mech. All good, all good. So Baby Diva, real low. No, this isn't Baby Diva, this is Moira. Baby Diva is dead. That She died right there, okay. It's just Moira was standing in roughly the same location. So I was like, damn, Baby Diva got healed quickly. So this translocator didn't accomplish very much. Uh, it kind of gets us out of the way of the far rockets, I suppose. She actually did miss as a result of us doing that. So I suppose that's me shown, isn't it? Uh, hacking her doesn't really accomplish much right there because she isn't even really trying to jump. So trying wasn't really worth it. Better off just trying to put extra damage into her. Um, that was scary, but it didn't actually hit us. He did have his ult, but I mean, he wasn't gonna use it from that position. So, it's not a great place for the translocator, because again, there's like, we'd have to go out, we'd have to go like really out of our way to get healed if we go down this way. So this isn't a great place to put it. Like, you want it to be reasonably close to a health kit, at least. Like, unless you're using it purely to get to another location faster, in which case, you know, fair enough. If you're just using it, broadly speaking, for mobility, you don't have to play around a health kit. But for, like, this kind of use of the translocator, where you're putting it somewhere so that you can try, like, so that you're putting it somewhere so you can go do something aggressive and then you can come back to the translocator after you've done it or if something bad happens, right? If you're using the translocator like that, you want it to be near a health kit or near at least, like, where you can go to get healing. Like, because, so, you know, you can get healing from your teammates as well. So, like, if you put it down somewhere like that, there's no health kit down there and... There's no guarantee our teammates will be anywhere in the vicinity to heal us either. So chucking it down there 
if we translocate away because something bad happens while we're being aggressive, even if it goes like great, you're usually going to take some damage, so you want to heal before you do it again. We're going to have to go out of our way to get healing, so it's like not a great place to leave the translocator. We do still want to like vary up the location as much as possible as Sombra because that's part of the appeal of Sombra is that like, or part of Sombra's strengths, I should say, not necessarily her appeal, but. One of Sombra's strengths is the fact that she's very unpredictable as a hero. She can get to a lot of places very quickly and a lot of very unusual places. She has some very unique movement options. So, as a result, you want to vary up the place you play from as much as possible because if you just keep playing around like the same health kit over and over and over again, that starts to get pr like pretty predictable because you always know roughly where Sombra is going to come from. So you do want to vary it up. So better things to do is basically like, you don't need to vary it up between a lot of places just like two health kits is usually enough if you go back and forth between the two they're never quite sure which short, which one you're going to come from right because you can like alternate you could go back to the same one twice then go to the other one they're still never going to be quite sure where you're going to come from even if you just use two health kits so like the one up there is going to be a little bit scary to get to sometimes especially if there are defenders on the high ground but there's another one in here which actually doesn't see that much use unless a fight happens next to it and then there's the one back there as well, if you're like, want to be very cautious about not translocating onto danger, right? So rather than chucking it in there, it'd be better to like chuck it in this room. Right now, the enemy team are going to be more interested in just touching the payload than anything, than anything else. So if I want to just chuck the translocator down somewhere and go do something like aggressive right now, I'm just going to chuck it in this room. Because in all likelihood, they're just going to be beeline straight to the payload. And then if I need it, I can go there, I can pick up the health kit in there, and then start doing stuff again. Or the one up there, I'm drawn on the wrong fucking screen now. Or the one up there, same thing. Or the one behind their point that, we, that I pointed out a second ago. Because... Then you can also bully people that would be reinforcing out of the spawn. Down here, like now, there's no health kit in this room, so we have... To, I guess we didn't know there wasn't a health kit in this room, because we came down, like, looking for it. And yeah, there's the health kit over here as well. This one's a little bit more out of the way. We can hear the tire right now, which is why we're hiding, by the way. Um, Far is trying to come up behind us. We just hacked the health kit in there, so... We uh, couldn't hack her, but it didn't end up mattering, and now we can just hack this guy instead. You don't always need to hack the health kit, either, especially in like this kind of situation where there is a fight happening. It can be better to save the hack for when you get back, because there, there was a world where we needed to hack that Farah, because otherwise she barraged and killed our team, right? So it's the kind of thing where you don't always have to hack the health kit, especially if it's a large health kit, because if you go away and, like come back to the large health kit, it's probably going to be close to respawning by the time you translocate back again. Because you're probably like, and if it isn't, you can hack it when you get back, probably. So if you think you might need the hack in the near future, you don't always have to hack the large, the, hack the health kit that you're playing around. The small health kit, you might be more inclined to hack because you need two to actually get a full heal off of it anyway. But like the large health kits, you don't honestly need to hack them that often usually. Uh, if your team is going to be playing around the health kit in the near future, then that's different, but you don't always have to. So that's again not a great place to leave the translocator, because it's a very exposed location. Like, suppose something bad happens and we have to go out there, up there, right? All the health kits are actually pretty far away from that rooftop, and we're going to have to go through the enemy team to get to them, so risk of dying increases incredibly from that point. So that's not a great place to leave the translocator. Um, if we want, like... Uh, this is the thing, is that, like, you need to know where, like, all the health kits are. And, like, someone... Sombra is one of the ones who benefits from knowing where all the health kits are. Because there are a lot of health kits that are very underutilized in general, because they're out of the way. Because, for example, there's the health kit down here. That's, like, a really good aggressive one for Sombra, because if you hit set up down there, like, they can figure out where you've gone if they watch your translocator, so you don't want to play around this one constantly, because once they see you go over that way, they're going to know where you went if they were paying attention. But, like... This is a great aggressive one because you can put it down here, hack the place, then come up here, do something aggressive, translocate here, heal again, come back out and do something aggressive almost immediately. 
And you might go, well, but you just said it's risky to use that one, so then if I translocate back there again, I might die. Yeah, but if they see, like, if they see you go that way, they're probably not going to immediately collapse on it because they're going to go, oh, so she went over that way, but they're not going to just all suddenly teleport over there to get you. So you can leave it there again and just watch to see if any of them break away to go and camp the translocator. And then, or before you leave, you can like come out this way, chuck the translocator back like behind the staircase over there so that you can go around and get the health kit that's in this room over here. And then you can just, so basically it's just like, you can go do something aggressive, come down here, like come do something aggressive, translocate away, and then immediately come and do something aggressive again. And if the enemy team has, like, not progressed very far, it's, like, flank, back, flank again within, like, 20 seconds of each other. So you can apply, like, a lot of pressure using that health kit. So their Sombra's translocator is right here. Is this the... F there is a question in the email um, related to the translocator from the enemy Sombra. Was it this one? And near the start of the defense round, why did she throw her translocator next to where I hid mine in that closet? No, not not yet. Close. Soon. Almost. 1430-ish. So, I the basically I'm going to say, it's either because she was like, the email's like, I imagine the only reason would be that if she noticed I got out of, out of position at low health, she would blink after me and finish me off. But I'm not sure if there's some tactic I don't know about. It has to basically either be that, or she just didn't know that you threw your translocator in that room, and it was coincidence that that's where she also put hers. So, we've come down to this one now. It wasn't hacked before we got here, so we have to hack it again, but it's alright. We don't really need to wait for, like, the 23 hit points, really. Like, I know coming out below full health is usually pretty scary for a flanker, but... You don't really need to wait for the full health on that one. So there's a health kit below us right now. So it's the so doing like going this way has taken us a long time to get into position. So basically, I'm going to say we could have just chucked the health, chucked it like down this alleyway right here, because right now like fight's still happening. I basically just want to get back to the fight as quickly as possible. We could just chuck it down here. Then when we translocate back, we can just come in through the room and pick up the health kit while we're on the way back to the fight again. And just try and be as proactive as possible, basically, because instead we come like all the way up here. If we translocate here, we have to come further to get to the health kit. And But I mean, it just takes us slightly longer to get into position, basically, rather than just like chucking it down the alleyway and then coming down this way. Because, you know, we could have just chucked it down the alleyway next to this door, whoop, whoop, get that health kit, go back out again. Uh, you don't always also have to translocate away when you do something aggressive because we've translocated away both these times. We've actually been like full health both times we translocated away. So we could have stuck around a little bit longer and tried to follow up the aggression with more aggression rather than translocating away because that's a very unfortunate use of Reaper's uh, ult right there. Because if nothing bad is actually happening to you, you don't you don't have to translocate away. Like, right there, we got shot. Okay, fair enough. I uh, have to go kind of out of our way to get a health kit again this time, because we went down into this uh, this uh, alleyway. So it has it's coming up here, because that's, I assume, the closet. That's just, like, a closet Sombra typically plays around, so she might just have not noticed that your translocator was in there. So I did just hear their Sombra uncloak somewhere as well. Yeah, she. I just don't think that she knew ours was there. Because what this looks like to me is their Sombra chucked it just in front of the doorway. Like, I want to go do something right now. Because also, if she was trying to get you when you translocated away, she would have hacked this health kit. Because that would defeat the object of the... Uh, translocator, right? Because if it was to follow you, if you ran away in a bad situation, it doesn't really help her if you translocate onto a health kit you that she you can use, right? So she would have hacked it if uh, that was the case. So she just like was going past and chucked this in the door at the doorway, didn't look inside and notice the translocator. Because uh, otherwise she would have hacked the health kit so that you couldn't heal if you did go away. 
Um, sometimes, you know, sometimes the most simple explanation is the uh, is the most likely one. It often is, in fact, Occam's Razor. So I think a lot of people just die like right as we push that button. Yeah, so that's unlucky. Um, unlucky timing wise. So did we like notice at a time? So we just heard the tire. Is it the tire that kills them? No, it's not the tire that kills them. Yeah, it's just unfortunate timing more than anything else. Like two people died right as we used the imp. Or right after we used the imp. So there Sombra has her ult right now as well. I would have rather rehacked Sombra. Because I can see she has her ultimate. I don't want Sombra to use her ultimate right now. Um, hacking Diva is also cool, but I just really don't want someone to use their ultimate if we can avoid it. Um, so we're going to try and bully Junkraz. A little bit of a risky play, but he doesn't react exactly super well to it and we get away. Uh, so they're still pushing the payload. We jumped down right next to Zenyatta, it looks like, but Reaper killed him, and we didn't see the Zenyatta. Did we see the Zenyatta? I just said detected, but, like, are we, we, like, turned around, but he was already dead. Fair enough. Um, okay, right, so we're gonna try and bully Junkrat again. We hack him this time. Uh, it's worth doing for Junkrat, just because Junkrat's usual response is gonna be to turn around and throw the... Um, concussive mine in your face. So if he can't do that, it makes dying way less likely. So we saw Sombra went into that room over there. Because we can actually see the particle effect of where she... Of the her coming out of the translocator coming through the wall. Which shouldn't really be able to happen, should it? But I mean, based off of where she the translocator went, we could infer this regardless. So we could... Chuck our translocator in this doorway and just try to like get her immediately if we're feeling particularly brave. But if she's hacked the health kit in that room, then we won't be able to kill her because she'll have effectively infinite health. So their far is up to no good. I would as one of those situations I would have rather just shot her because she's half health already. She's pretty close and pretty easy to hit as far as hitboxes go anyway. And there's like nowhere she can go realistically from that position to get to safety so i would have rather just started shooting her rather than hack her that might have gone through the other side no mm, i don't know that might have gone through the other side uh which would be scary it did we came out right here and i just heard junkrat's bond like concussive mind go off right as we came to this translocator so i guess he didn't notice or did or like fucked up but like um, yeah, that that could have been bad, given that we just appeared right in front of their spawn. So I'm fine with chucking it in there, because that's, like, really close to the large health kit in here. But, yeah, uh, they could have, uh... It's also scary just because of proximity to the enemy team from that position. But they didn't notice. They're, they're like, more in concern with this. So... How many people did we hit with that? We hit Diva Drunkrat. Did we hit the other person? It's only Orissa, isn't it? So it's not like the end of the world if she got hacked anyway. Um, so now we have to come all the way back again. Oh, us. Because we were invisible, right? Because they changed it, didn't they? Yeah, so we needed to break stealth to block this a little bit sooner. That's sad. Hmm. Yeah, it's the kind of situation where, like, you should just break stealth while running up to the payload. Because we can see that basically everybody is dead. And they're really close to the end. So it's the kind of situation where we should just break stealth just to be sure that something like this can't happen. Because she ends up just barely getting it to the end. And she's the only one alive. Like, as we can see, we would have stopped them from capturing that checkpoint if we broke it, like, a second earlier. Unfortunate. Um, so, what I'm noticing is that uh, we're doing, like... I can see... and like, we've, we've seen um, this person play Sombra before. And, like, like, one of the things I said was try to... Um, 
Ooh, 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 ooh. Um, one of the things I said was try to vary up where you approach from as much as possible uh, so that the enemy team can't predict where you're coming from because Sombra, part of her benefit is uh, being unpredictable. And I can see that we're trying to do that. We're chucking the translocator in lots of different locations. But, so here's the other, here's the second part of this though, is right? Our overall uptime, like interacting with the enemy team, is fairly low. Like we're spending a fair bit of time, like walking around the edges of fights, like not actually participating in the fights. Like we're taking a lot of time to like set up, basically. And then when we go and do something aggressive, we are quite often appearing in locations where it's going to take us a while to actually like get back regardless. So then we also take a long, like a long time to get set up as well. So our overall like participation in the fight isn't great. So, yeah, it's good that we're trying to vary the location up as much as possible, but we want to get it to a point where we do it much faster, basically, because we still want to be interacting with the enemy team as much as possible, right? We want to be like hacking people as much as possible. We want to be farming alts as much as possible, right? We want to be just like doing stuff as much as possible. I would have gone more aggressive to try and get the hack on this diva. Cause that's gonna take, like the hack will go off before that bomb explodes. So we could hack the, just like come around the corner, just hack the diva, translocate away. We'll get away from the explosion. I also think that might've been too high to get us regardless, but we could have like stopped that diva from getting in that mech. If we just went like real hard on that hack because we had a translocator put somewhere already. So, but well, before point I was going making before, we do still want to be like taking part in the game as actively as possible. We actually got in hack range, but then stopped to shoot the Farah. Um, sometimes it's right to shoot, sometimes it's right to hack. I think that one goes either way, honestly, given the position Farah was in. Um, point I was making before. So we want we want to be interacting with the game as much as possible. So. It's good that we're trying to vary up the location as much as possible. That's that's part of it. But then the other part is we still we want to do it fast. We want to chuck our translocator somewhere as quickly as possible. And it doesn't necessarily have to be in a super convenient location. Like I'm not saying it has to be on a fucking health kit every single time, right? But it it we want it to be somewhere where once we translocate away cuz we if we're placing it somewhere to go and do something aggressive we have to have an expectation that we might translocate away. We probably will translocate away wounded and we will want to heal as quickly as possible. It doesn't need to be squarely on top of a health kit every time, but we want it to be somewhere close to a source of healing so that we can like translocate over there, get the health kit as quickly as possible, chuck our translocator wherever we're going to go, you know, stealth off, go somewhere else, chuck the translocator somewhere as quickly as possible and then just get in the fight as quickly as possible, right? Because here's the thing, right? Is that like, if we spend a really long time setting up our translocator, it's like every time we translocate away, we've died, right? Because if we translocate away and then it takes us like 10, 15 seconds to get set up and actually start like doing stuff to the enemy team again, we might as well have been respawning during that period of time for the amount of time it took us to get interacting with the enemy team again. So... We want to do that. We want that process of like translocating away and getting healed and set up again to be as quick as possible because we want to be pressuring the enemy team as much as possible. I think that Sombra is like, if the Sombra is good, she's easily the most oppressive hero in the game to play against because she's just always there. You don't know where she's coming from. She fucking hacks you and you can't do anything. If you're a tank, it feels terrible. So we really just like, want to keep it like we want to do stuff as much as possible i mean that's true for every hero we want to be doing stuff as much as possible right so um it's good you know it's good we're trying to vary it up but we want to we want the process to be as fast as possible we're doing it a lot better now actually than we were previously um it's actually sort of getting been getting better as the game's gone by but like we want that whole healing up and getting back in the fight process to be as quick as possible um, so, they haven't got super long left, we're just sort of, like, hovering behind them, like, waiting for stuff to happen right now. 
and we're going to start bullying around the Orissa. Kind of low health, so we translocate away. We don't really need to hack this health kit, because this, like, just from, like, the position we're in, right? We've got to go all the way back to the fight. By the time we just get back to the fight, this thing's going to be, like, two-thirds of the way towards respawn. So we could, and bearing in mind, a fight is still actively happening on the payload right now. So we might need to use this hack in the next few seconds, right? So we could just put the translocator here and then go away and immediately start doing stuff and save the hack for if we need it over there. Because just by the time we get over there, the health kit will have been mostly respawn, like halfway respawn. So then by the time we've done something and translocated it away, it'll basically be here again. So we could save the hack for like, if we come around this corner, we might see somebody we immediately want to hack, right? So then we could save it for that situation rather than using it for the health kit. Um, so, D.Va just killed a bunch of people with self-destruct, so, like, they're pretty fucked. This is the kind of situation where I don't actually want to go back to the payload right now, because our whole team is, like, alive right now. They can just kind of deal with the one person over here in all likelihood, right? Um, I would rather go and start trying to bully the people who are getting back, because we could just, like, bully this Moira. And it's like, if you're trying to bully the people who are trying to get back in overtime, a lot of the times they're just gonna have to start running straight past you, so it usually makes them easier to kill. Um, and just given the amount of our team that was alive relative to their team, I'll trust them to deal with, like, the couple of heroes that are still there. Okay, uh, you know, you might not be as trusting, right? You might go, my team is fucking bad. I don't think they're gonna kill these two people in a reasonable period of time. He's got pretty tr good tracking for a Bronze Reaper, honestly. Uh, 70 eliminations, damn. There was a lot of killing happening in that game. And yet our Mercy only healed 9k. And that was more than their team as well to have gotten the card. Sad times. Um, they had a Moira. I was probably through saying, like, you might not trust your team. You might be my team is fucking bad and they're not going to kill the two, one or two people that are there. So I'm going to help them kill them. Fair enough. I personally would rather go and start bullying the people who are coming back from spawn in that position because it's relatively certain that the team will be able to deal with that. From my perspective, anyway, you might disagree. You might think my team's too bad. I don't trust them to do it. That's also fair enough. So, um, 63 hacks is pretty good. It's like, that's a lot, but like, there were a few hacks in there that we didn't strictly need to do. There are a few hacks in there that we could have um, cut out rather by just like killing the person that we hacked rather than hack them. Because if they're dead, they aren't casting any abilities anyway, right? So, um, but that's pretty good. Usually you want to have hacked as many people as possible and like 29 offensive assists. That's like roughly half of the hacks converted into a kill, basically, right? Um, and it might have—they might have still converted into a kill after, like the hack might have set it up, but the hack wore off. Blah, 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 blah. But like roughly half of them converted into a kill. So like that's pretty good. I'm fine with that. Because um, there was like a, a vague question directed to the end there. Um, I know flankers in general can really easily lose track of the payload, and I want to know if I had an impact on the game. I received one metal bronze, and was not on the payload much at all. Blah, 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 blah. I see I had fairly high enemies hacked, but I'm not exactly, sh but I'm not sure what that actually meant for the rest of my team and wherever I left them in a five v six. Yeah, so the number of hacks doesn't necessarily mean anything because if it says like ninety three heroes hacked, twelve offensive assists, that means we hacked a lot of people, but we didn't like we didn't hack them meaningfully essentially because very few of the hacks actually converted into a kill, right? So. The 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 number here, the higher that number is, the, that's obviously cool. But like, what we want is a relatively high ratio of offensive assists to have resulted from it as well. So like, roughly half of them got a kill. That's fine. I'm I'm fine with that. So, um, overall, we had an impact in the game. Yes, our our overall impact could have been higher. We just aren't like super efficient with how we move around the map and how we set up our translocator so we could have overall been more efficient but like that's the kind of thing that comes gradually over time as you get more familiar with the maps where all the health kits are and just like how like how to move around the space as the hero that's just the kind of thing that like uh comes more gradually really because Moving around the maps, like, really efficiently as someone like Sombra is the kind of thing that, like, takes a fair amount of time to build up because 
there's a lot of maps in the game at this point, and Sombra has very unique movement compared to the other heroes. So it's the kind of thing you will build up very slowly over time. But I would say, like, just try and, like, keep the setup, like, the setup and healing phase of the translocator play. Try and keep that as short as possible. Do, like, still, you know, try and vary up where you approach from as much as possible. But we want to try and keep that preparatory and healing phase as short as possible so that we can just like spend more time bullying people and building alt charge and fighting and all that so um right idea just gotta try and get a little bit more efficient at it basically so thank you very much for watching if you did if you have any questions feel free to ask i'm more than happy to answer if you haven't already you can join our discord and ask questions more directly and have a conversation about them or just ship post with us and i hope you found the video helpful